Hello there. I've been advising PhD students for about two decades and here are some of the things that I learned about the most common mistakes. I'll share them with you in the hopes that you can avoid them. And we're starting right now. I think the single most common mistake is that people don't start writing from the very beginning. This is sometimes difficult to see for people why they should start writing in the beginning because they would say, well, I don't have any results, so how can I actually start writing something? But trust me, you can always write something. You will be reading the literature and so you can paraphrase what you read and translate it into something that you learned by writing. You can use these text blocks that you produced later on in maybe the introduction to your PhD or also in the introduction sections of your papers or maybe in the discussion sections of your papers. But this text you can reuse later on. Also, you can start researching your methods, of course, and you can start writing down the methods and put them into text in your own words. So this is also something that you can write. So basically, you can always write from the very beginning, and you should, because you will get better with practice. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but you really need to get into a routine. Some people say maybe write something for 30 minutes every day or whatever works for you but get into a routine of producing text. Very important, produce that text in English from the very beginning. Also take all your notes in English. This is so that you don't change languages all the time if English is not your first language. Train yourself to put everything down in English in your, in your writing from the very beginning. Also, it makes it more accessible to others if others will end up uh, using your notes for whatever reason. Um, if your notes are in some other language that other people cannot understand, then they're not useful. So from the very beginning, force yourself, force yourself to be using English all the time. But this really is the single most common problem, uh, that people don't start writing from the very beginning, and so they focus on producing results, and then they learn techniques, and they use the statistics, and learn the bioinformatics pipelines, or whatever have you, but in the end, you still need to produce a thesis, and that is actually writing. And people realize often too late that being a scientist is also being a writer. And they are not separate. They are part of the same story. So get into the habit of writing very early on and stick to it. Another common issue that I observe, and actually this is something that I suffered from myself also quite a lot, is overthinking in year one or in the beginning of your PhD. Yeah, so this is um, a real problem. Um, you can very easily get overwhelmed with all the new information that floods into your brain from all the sources that you're reading and you are, your, your thoughts get more and more complicated and your, well, your model of the world becomes more and more sophisticated, which is all good. But I think at some point you need to stop with all the thinking and actually get down and do something. So this has also been a problem with my own PhD many years ago. I um, thought and thought and thought and wrote proposal draft over, after proposal draft after proposal draft and read more and more literature and had more and more ideas. And over all that, I ended up forgetting to actually go to the lab and doing some uh, work so that I would have at least some results. And that led to me well, feeling frustrated because I saw, I saw other people actually got some data and so I felt left behind. And so while I learned something from it, namely how to write proposals and how to assimilate information, formulate questions, that was all good. I think I should have much, much earlier started to transition into actually collecting some data or producing something rather than just overthinking all the time. So the advice is, you know, obviously don't stop thinking. You have to think um, all the time, so that would be terrible advice. But you know, at some point, call it good. Get into the lab, um, get some data, because then you're gonna start feeling better about yourself, guaranteed. And um, it, there is a tendency for people to get lost in their thinking, and um, I think this is a real issue that most people face during their PhD, um, especially in the beginning. So really at some point draw the line, say this is good enough, what I know now is sufficient. Of course, with the help of your mentor and your fellow lab mates, 
design an experiment and go for it. Now, when you plan that first experiment, a mistake that I have seen repeatedly now is that first experiment <laughs> is something that you pour all your ambition into typically because you've been thinking about it for a while and you've prepared and the experiment tends to become more and more complicated because you're always thinking about including another factor or another modifier or another set of measurements. And so that first experiment has sort of a natural tendency to become a monster. Now this is potentially very risky because experiments very often fail. This is just the reality for reasons that are beyond your control or they can fail for a number of reasons really. So if you pour that much energy into an experiment from the very beginning and it ends up failing, or not producing what you had expected or anything useful really, then it becomes a massive frustration. Also this can tend to overwhelm you because you have so many other things to also think about. Maybe you've moved to a new city, you're in a new country, you have to maybe take some coursework, you have to network, you have to learn methods and then you set up this experiment. The experiment is too complicated. I think it can push you easily over the edge. So design a moderately ambitious experiment or study to begin with. I think that this sounds uh, almost like counterproductive advice because of course everybody wants to be ambitious and do the best PhD they can. But I think, trust me, the first experiment and whatever I've seen um, this not being followed it, or when I forgot to tell people about it or when I got carried away with my own enthusiasm and my advice, um, this has often not gone over well. So I think it's very important to start simple, do a simple experiment, ask simple questions, use this experiment to learn uh, the methods, um, to learn also the possibilities of things that can go wrong that you hadn't thought about before. Uh, setting out an experiment is always a learning experiment because there are always questions that pop up during the setup that you hadn't previously considered. It can be very trivial things. How to uh, fill soil into pots? How to, to pack the soil in the pot so that they're e equal? Or how do I transfer the seedlings over? It's, it's a myriad of little things and a myriad of little decisions that you will still have to take even for a very simple experiment. And so I think it's good to start with something that's simple that will also give you some preliminary data, maybe to ask a better question next time. You will have learned the methods, you will have also a better sense than what's really realistic, how many samples can you realistically process and how many uh, experimental units can you realistically really handle given the facilities you have or the time that's available. And so there's so many advantages to just starting with a simple experiment, get uh, familiar with the setup in your lab and then Hopefully you will have learned something from this experiment. Maybe it's even exciting enough data that it could be part of a little chapter. This is great. If not, at least you have not sunk all that energy into a potential a huge experiment that has a, a real risk of failing. So I think when you do this first experiment or if you, do, if you don't do experiments, you do observational studies, do a smaller observational study or if you do a research synthesis, use a more limited set of keywords and search terms. Whatever it is, the first thing that you do, don't make it this massive, potentially overwhelming thing because there is a real risk that that will send you in a tailspin. Another point is that when people come in, they generally think of, oh wow, you know, three, four years, this is actually plenty of time because you're also still young, so three or four years seems like an eternity to you. Remember how long a summer vacation used to be when you were in school? It seemed like an eternity. Now the thing is, these three or four years, they will go by much, much faster than you think. So from the very beginning, establish routines that are productive, that are useful, that, um, make pro that help you make progress. And don't be surprised how fast these three to four years will pass you by. So it's important that from the very beginning you don't take a sort of um, more relaxed attitude towards your first year. Uh, well, often the first year will not be super productive, but you can still learn a lot of things. You can make progress in other ways. You can practice your writing, as we've mentioned before. You read the literature. Make sure you make steady progress. This is the most important thing. You always have to make some progress. Don't wait like for inspiration or something. You know, just make progress and because this time, the time will fly. 
especially when you have to set up an experiment and you have to collect several seasons, growing seasons worth of data. Time will really fly. And also make sure that you, of course, don't put all your eggs in one basket. If your major thing is to do a field survey of like two or three years, make sure you have a backup plan or some smaller greenhouse experiment so that you always have something that you can be doing while you're waiting results for results from something else. Or if experimental work is not possible, then make sure you have maybe a data synthesis component of your PhD. So th there's always something that you can contribute to and always something that you can make um, progress in your PhD because time will really go by fast. And one of the most common problems is communication. It's communication within your teammates, communication within your network, and communication with your mentor or advisor. This is usually where things can really go wrong. So for example, when you're struggling with a certain problem, uh, experimental problem or whatever you, the study is, you're, stu you're struggling with something and then you're sort of stewing in your own juices for too long. Don't do that. I mean, think about things first, by all means. <laughs> Don't use other people as your external brain. I think this is bad. Think about things first. But then once a reasonable time has passed, you decide what's reasonable in an hour, a day or whatever, then don't keep mulling over that point. Just ask somebody. Ask a more experienced PhD student, ask a postdoc, ask your mentor. And also some, some things that seem like very difficult to solve or seem almost unsurmountable issues when you talk to somebody with more experience. So many times in my experience, things can be resolved so quickly and so easily. And it doesn't necessarily only have to be things about science, it can also be about things about the arrangement in the lab, like you don't like it in that office or whatever it is. <laughs> it's, it's astonishing to me often how long people stew over a certain problem and start feeling bad about something. And then in the end, it's just solved in 30 seconds or one minute. And it was also surprising many times to the people themselves. And so they, they also learned like, oh, I guess if I have a problem, I should, I should come and talk to somebody. And also, you know, it's very important that you keep communication open with your mentor all the time. Uh, you have a regular schedule of where at least some, some communication, some feedback. Uh, so you don't go on also in a wrong direction. This is also something that can really derail you if you're going in a, in a direction that ends up not being productive or you're thinking too long about one particular thing. Um, that maybe couldn't even be done well in this particular lab or whatever it is, just talk, communicate, uh, force yourself to communicate if you're a little bit shy or maybe there's an easier way if you have a, an internal um, lab communication tool like we have, there isn't basically almost no barrier to sending a message to somebody and asking them for advice this is extremely important. Um, so communication is often where the biggest problems arise when communication doesn't happen or when uh, communication is sort of ineffective. And there's really many things you can do. You can come prepared to meetings with a worked out list of problems. Make sure you have thought about all kinds of things before so you don't come repeatedly. Just have one meeting where you sort of check all the boxes for an experiment or study that you're planning. Yeah, there is just a lot of things you can make. <laughs> you can work on communication. We all do, right? Well, we all work on our communication skills all the time. Uh, super important. I think it's uh, actually one of the most important ingredients to success during your PhD is to learn to effectively communicate. That communication also extends beyond your own lab, even though I think communication with your mentor is probably the single most important thing in addition to communicating effectively with your lab mates. But don't forget that there's a world out there. Networking is an extremely important part of your success as a scientist. So make sure that you invest a, a decent amount of time in your network also from the very beginning. That network can be at your university within the same department like use of some equipment or uh, learning some methods, but it can also mean going to another university. Um, it can take very many different forms. As you can imagine, research is very diverse, but um, networking will always tend to make you more successful. And therefore, not networking can be a real problem. Well, and then finally, I think a PhD will really test your limits. It's a very difficult thing to do. It will test your limits in terms of perseverance, in terms of your, well, intellectual capabilities. You know, you will go to basically the borders of your ability in every single way. 
It will test how well you deal with failure and, and setbacks and how well you navigate human interactions. And there's so many facets to a PhD. So don't forget that it is really difficult to do. And so also be patient with yourself. So don't be frustrated when things don't work your way from the very beginning. This can also be a recipe for a disaster. And you, you should just come prepared. Sometimes I see these people have no real appreciation for how difficult this is actually going to be. It's not just a job, it really isn't. It is a um, very deep learning experience. You're, you're basically earning the highest academic degree. It is something completely different from a bachelor or a master's degree, at least in this country. Um, there is an expectation for you to produce something new um, in addition to the research landscape that hasn't been there before of sufficient quality. So this is actually difficult to do and you should come prepared with that mental attitude that you will test your limits in terms of your mental abilities, in terms of methods that you can learn, in terms of statistics, and your language abilities, your writing, your presentation skills, everything will be tested basically to the limit. And so it's just important to realize that you will see your limits also. And that can sometimes be an unpleasant experience. You know, for example, when I realized, well, I'm not that good at math. And well, it's not so nice to realize that when you see other people being more successful at it. Or whatever it is, it could, could be anything. It can, you can see people can basically very easily talk to other people. And uh, for you, it's kind of a struggle because you are more shy. Whatever it is, <laughs> be prepared for that experience. I think so when it comes, you will be saying, oh yeah, I guess I went into that knowing that this will be hard. And I, I just have to stick to it and get through it to succeed. And I think that's also uh, some, sometimes where mistakes are made when people are too, I don't know, too blue-eyed about um, how difficult this will be, that can go seriously wrong. Also, the other way around, when, when uh, your expectations are too high, right? I mean, you don't need to do Nobel Prize level work during your PhD. Nobody expects it. Also, nobody expects you to do a breakthrough or to have a breakthrough in your work. You just need to do new work that is of sufficiently high quality, but it's hard enough. So basically make sure you check your, your expectations and that you are prepared for seeing your limits. So I hope if you <laughs> listen to this, um, advice in this video. You won't make these mistakes. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next video. Good luck with your PhD.